with a little overview for I know prior to coming up here I spoke with with um, a few of you who are familiar with our work but I'm sure there's a lot of you out there who have never heard of Brave New Films so I'll give you the little summary of, of who we are and, and what we've done. The company itself started about five years ago um, with the documentary Uncovered about the lead up to the war, war in Iraq and the documentary Al Foxed about um, Fox News and River Murdoch's control of the media. It was really an outgrowth of, of Robert's work on a couple of other documentaries and, and Robert's activism throughout his, his life, but I'll let him talk to you about that. When I came on board um, four years ago, it was because I had seen Out Fox. Now, Out Fox, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. It is, it is a powerful documentary and really, thank you, and really um, un unveils what happens within a giant corporation and how they are really able to skew the news to however they see fit. I had seen the documentary, and Robert was growing the company at the time and looking for, for someone to come on doing development. And, and I wrote an email with my resume to the company asking for the position. I was surprised to get an email back from Robert personally, but that's who he is. He answers every email, every phone call that anybody gives him. Um, and I, you know, I, I basically asked for the job. He said, no, kid, you know, you're not really fit for this position. But I, I persisted since I'm from New York. <laughs> And to my pleasure, he agreed to meet with me and, and eventually did offer me the job. And now, four years later, I have learned so much from, from working at this, at this company. Um, we made the movie Walmart, the high cost of low price, and then one called Iraq for Sale. Thank you. The War Profiteers, uh, about all the profiteering that's going on, before deciding to move to a short form. Uh, YouTube was just starting. And we found that the clips that we put on YouTube of Iraq for Sale were getting tens of thousands of views from people. Uh, we knew that Iraq for Sale, we had about 7,000 house parties on Iraq for Sale and probably reached through those house parties uh, about 50 or 60,000 people. Knowing that we could put clips on, of, of short clips on of a, of a piece of material on YouTube and instantly reach tens of thousands of people we decided to experiment with that form. We also felt that we could cover more ground. Instead of <laughs> developing a, a documentary, a long-form documentary, and shooting it and going through that process, which, which takes almost a year, uh, we would be able to cover a multitude of social justice issues in a much shorter amount of time. So through that, we started covering uh, immigration reform and gay rights and worker rights and, and continued doing a lot of war work. Um, we formed a PAC, we were a PAC, a C3 and a C4, we formed a PAC and started doing some work about McCain, and our list grew and grew and grew. And so basically now, we're a, we have over a million people um, who are on our email list. And so with the press of a button, we can literally reach a million people across the country and across the world, who in turn send our videos to their friends, and, and we're able to have a hit like we did with the real McCain of 8 million views with one video, which is, which is pretty phenomenal. All of our short videos have a, a purpose. They'll have an action ask at the end. And what we'll do is we'll do a series of them on a particular subject. And that's basically what you're going to see tonight, is a series of our sick for profit videos, which were about health care. Each one asking the audience to activate themselves and to do something to make a difference. Because it's very important for us to motivate people to cause change, whether it's signing a petition or or calling um, a radio station to, to drop a, uh, drop somebody from from their airwaves, or passing it on to a friend, you know, they're all actions to enlighten people and to engage people to make a difference. Uh, we encourage you to go to our Brave New Film site. There's a lot of exciting things going on there. Our latest show is called Brave New Conversations which is a series where we talk with politicians and activists and artists about what motivated them and also talk to them about their, their latest um, ventures. We recently interviewed, or Robert recently interviewed Amy Goodman for that series 
and it's a, it's a very powerful conversation. We've had Shepard Ferry on, and the Yes Man, and Daniel Ellsberg, and Matt Ho. Uh, upcoming, we have Jane Fonda, Benjamin Bratt, um, Tom Hartman, Henry Rollins, uh, a lot of great people who have a lot of very interesting things to say. Um, so go to that site, BraveNewConversations.com. We'll hopefully entice you to become members. Uh, and, and we'll see more of you because we'll invite you to our studio for our little get-togethers as well. It's in Culver City, and we do these conversations live, and then, and then they're, they're broadcast over the internet. Um, I guess I'm going to let you introduce Sick for Profit, unless you want to add anything else right now. Do we have a short clip to play that's not Sick for Profit, or it starts right now? We start with Sick for Profit. We, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you want to inter, inter, you want to, okay. I'm going to turn it over to Robert Greenwald. Thank you. Um, Thank you for inviting us here tonight. We're going to show and talk about Sick for Profit, but I want to start it by saying that our primary goal tonight, as it is whenever we do these events, is to let you know that not only do you have the power, but we need you to get involved. So in thinking about it and watching these, to think about the different ways that you all can be helpful. On the most basic level, the way the internet works is we put a clip up, we never have any money for advertising, and the way we get views is people like yourself saying, oh, I like that, and sending it on. And that's, you know, they've done all kinds of research, and the most effective messenger in the world, from a marketing point of view, is when somebody sends a clip on to somebody they know. And just think about the difference for a minute. You're watching television and an advertisement comes on. You run out of the room, you mute it, you have it on TiVo. Versus a friend, a relative, a colleague forwarding you a video about healthcare, about Afghanistan, uh, about Fox News, any of those things. So we fundamentally do not exist if people do not take the time and the effort to pass them along when they see them, number one. Number two, um, we're, we're always looking and expanding the volunteers we've recently started. In the, you know, we all know how terrible the economy is, and uh, we've been very badly hit financially at Brave New Films. We had to lay off a lot of people, and the only way we've been able to keep going is increase our fundraising, which Jim is doing an amazing job, and also increase the volunteer pool so that we're taking various jobs that we're not able to hire full-time people and using volunteers. So any of you who have time and skill sets should talk to or email either Jim or myself and we'll make sure that um, you know somebody talks to you. But there's that great line that I use over and over again, which is democracy is not a spectator sport. So it's fine to get pissed off about something. It's great to break your television set when you know something gets you angry and you want it. But there's a whole lot more that we all can do about it. And so, you know, we welcome your getting involved with us from passing a video to financially contributing to volunteering your time and other things that you'll think of. Having screenings like this with our Rethink Afghanistan campaign. We've had over a thousand screenings around the country of the film, and more and more we're asking people to go to their, call their congressman, the you know, senator, maybe the mayor's office. Love to get the mayor to come to a screening. Um, and even though it's you know it's a national issue, there's going to be lots of votes coming up that we're. Um, it's going to be very important that we help educate the elected officials. So that we don't continue to spend, I, you may, many of you may have already heard this, one troop in Afghanistan, one year, is one million dollars. That's 25 schools in Afghanistan for one troop, one year. Just, you know, you, you start to think about it and it's going to be billions and billions of dollars. So, I don't want to go off on Afghanistan because we're here to talk about sick for profit tonight. So, um, just very briefly, um, 
we had been obviously, like everyone, very concerned about the health care debate, wanting to participate, but would only participate if we could find a role to play that was not being played by any other group or a story to tell that was not being told. And so in June, was it? Is that when we started? Yeah. So in June, <clears throat> we were able to get some funding, some, uh, some support to say, we'd like you to do a campaign. We spent the proud four, five, six weeks analyzing it, and what was clear from our point of view back then was there was a couple of things that weren't being covered. From a simple movie-making point of view, every story has a good guy, but every story has a villain. At that point, there was no villain in the healthcare debate. The insurance companies had not been identified as the problem, so it became, in many people's minds, it's too complicated, or it's bureaucracy, but it's not. You know, there's a fundamental issue at stake here, which you'll see the video. So we said, you know what? There's a role we can play, which is in telling the story that hasn't been, had not been told at that point about the greed of the insurance companies, the fact that every time they turn you down for coverage, they make more money. And that was something that um, we focused on. And there's, you know, it was extraordinary research that we were able to get that backs up all of that up. So that became our mission, to tell that story, to get it into the culture, to get it into the media, to get it into as many hands as possible, and in short a period of time, in an effort to um, affect the policy decisions. So we were able to put out a series of videos. Why don't we start with the first one? It just, there. First one. Watertown for about six years now. I have three daughters. My oldest daughter is Adriana. She's 10 years old. My middle daughter is Kennedy and she's eight. And my youngest is Isabella. She turned five in April. Our world was pretty much turned upside down in a matter of minutes to us finding out that we would have a critically ill child who had not just one but multiple life-threatening disorders was just mind-boggling. At that point, ear infections were the worst thing in the world. We were told initially that the paperwork was lost. Um, a couple weeks later, we were told by United Healthcare it was denied. The big winners in this broken healthcare system, let's look at who they are. The CEO of United Health Group, Stephen Helmsley, his salary $3.2 million. Incredible gross profits of the private health insurance industry that is at the core of the problem. A few years ago, I think the president of United Healthcare um, made uh, so much money that one in every $700 that was spent in this country on healthcare went to pay him. So. Did you hear that? Pretty striking. It's, it's pretty amazing. They just got a little gas out of those yeah, folks. Yeah, yeah. We immediately appealed to see if we could get, you know, the, the coverage that we needed. And our first appeal was denied. Bella was continuing to suffer through very painful G-tube feedings to the point where she would actually try and rip her G-tube out of her stomach because they hurt her so much. She was to the point where she would literally look at a spoon and vomit. And we would have to, my husband or myself, would have to hold her so that she wasn't swinging at us. And I also really felt that it was United Healthcare's responsibility to pay for it. We were told no so many times. It was just... It was incredibly frustrating. If they didn't pay this one-time cost, she was going to suffer. Profits these insurance companies are making, folks, absolutely, they are obscene. He was six months old. We were at the pediatrician, and 
He's mentioned that Dylan would probably need the Doc Brand helmet to correct the plagiocephaly. And if he didn't wear this helmet, then he could potentially have issues eating. Two months into the treatment, we got the denial letter uh, from United Healthcare saying that they weren't going to cover it. They viewed the helmet as cosmetic. Why are we putting money into the profits of insurance companies rather than into medicine? My name is Steve Hemsley, and I'm the president and the chief executive of United Health Group. Our mission at United Health Group is to help people live healthier lives. And our more than 80,000 employees do this every day for more than 70 million Americans. My entire colon ended up getting large and pretty much dying, and with no explanation, they did several tests. And after my second surgery, and that's when they had to put me on the IV nutrition. Everything I ate just came straight through and was not being absorbed. That's why I had to have the TPN to keep me alive and to keep hydrated even. They kept telling my local pharmacy who was providing the TPN, oh, we're just waiting for one more letter or we're just waiting for one more script and then we'll start paying. This went on for six months. And December 4th, both the pharmacy and I received a letter through United Healthcare saying that they deemed it medically unnecessary and that they were not going to pay any of it. I tried to explain to them that if I do not have this, I will die. And the only response she gave me was okay. Government officials are actually calling this the biggest health insurance scam they have ever seen. The victims are patients, in many cases, very sick patients. To live in a society that would allow the CEO and higher executives of United Healthcare to make three quarters of a billion in stock, it's disgusting. It was also very frustrating to know that they made that money off the backs of people like me. Where is all that money going? I can't imagine what kind of house he has on the house. Behind all those numbers are real people. I don't know how in the world you call yourself an insurance health care giver. It's just ridiculous. Stephen Hemsley, how are you able to sleep at night? about how to modernize our health care system. Here's what's going on. You're now being driven by Wall Street. Cancel oh. your coverage. He says it's not in their best interest. Now, the suit was brought by a number of institutional Has this ever happened to you? You go to adoptions of unfair insurance reimbursement. Criminally. That's right, criminal charges. See frequent evidence. Woe to anyone who gets between them and the profits they reap 